This video is brought to you by Hoodbeast.com. Design your own custom hoodies. Hoodbeast.com. We are beast. Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Zachly. Thank you for joining me back on that quest to 200k and hashtag a million a year. You guys already know that you are the real MVPs. If you haven't joined the quest to 200k and hashtag a million a year, then you might as well hop on now. Anyways, though, it really is getting about that time in the NBA season where things are going to start getting crazy. The NBA trade deadline is on February 8th this year, which is only a little more than a month away. So in the coming weeks, you're going to find more and more articles talking about teams looking to make moves. And that is why when I woke up this morning and saw this, I was not surprised that at all. The Los Angeles Lakers, we talked about them a few days ago trying to trade Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson. By the way, something else came out this morning saying that they would love to trade both those guys. So it's pretty much a fact now that they're going to be looking to trade Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson. But the thing we don't know is what are they going to be looking for in return for Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson? We had no clue about that, but now we might. As it turns out that the Los Angeles Lakers are reportedly looking to trade for either Paul George or DeMarcus Cousins by the trade deadline. First off, before we go any further with this, let me just throw the idea, the notion that might be in anyone's head that the Lakers can trade for Paul George right now straight out the window because I cannot see why on earth the Thunder will be looking to trade Paul George. If the Thunder were still playing as badly as they were to start this season, then yeah, I could see them looking to trade Paul George but when they're starting to get things together when they're starting to gel why in their right minds would they trade Paul George they wouldn't that ain't happening DeMarcus Cousins though that actually makes sense kind of well I don't know why they would trade for him when he's about to be an unrestricted free agent and he could just leave for nothing in the summer actually just thinking about it Never mind. This actually does make sense. Stay with me here because this might sound a bit crazy at first. Remember, at the end of the day, the Lakers are trying to trade Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson in like a salary dump because they don't want to pay them. They want to make sure heading into the summer they have enough money to sign two max level players. That's the whole motive they have for trading Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson. It's nothing personal, it's a business move. And I'm sure once summer starts, they're going to be interested in DeMarcus Cousins. So it's like if the Lakers do trade Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson for DeMarcus Cousins right now, even if DeMarcus Cousins doesn't resign with them over the offseason, they would still have enough money to go out and look for two max level players. You guys get what I'm saying here? That's their end goal in the first place. If they trade for Cousins and he walks away, then it's fine. They still have all the money. They got Clarkson and Randle's contracts all the books. And if he does resign, then it's like, hey, it's great. We got one of our max players down. We're one step closer to completing their end goal. So yes, it actually does make sense for the Lakers to be trying to trade for DeMarcus Cousins right now instead of just waiting for free agency to start. And it could also possibly give them the upper hand in signing DeMarcus Cousins this summer because he'd get the rest of the year to see what it would be like to play next to Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and the rest of the young players that the Lakers have. Plus, the Lakers would go to him and tell him, look, this is our plan for the offseason. We already got you. If you stay with us, if we lock you up, that's only going to make it easier for us to go out and get another max level player. Once that happens, we can start making some noise in the NBA because I think that's going to be the hardest part for the Lakers to get that first max level player to commit to sign with them. In previous years, they have whiffed on just about everyone they went after except for Luol Deng, Timothy Mozgov, and I guess KCP too. But now they're hoping that Lonzo Ball and the development of like Brandon Ingram will be enough to change that because in their past, their whole pitch to free agents was, hey, we're LA. That's it. That ain't gonna get nobody. Now, like I said, they'll have this whole thing. They'll have a young core and then they can add to Marcus Cousins to that core before free agency starts. Then LA becomes a much more attractive destination. So I will look out for the Lakers in the coming weeks. They're about to be huge players in the NBA trade deadline. This is one of the legit times where you can say the refs cost us the game. Sometimes it's debatable where you can make an argument for and against it, but this is not one of those times. Giannis Antetokounmpo, clear as day, stepped out of bounds. And you can't even say, well, maybe the ref missed it because he didn't have a good angle of the play. He wasn't close enough. There is no excuse. The ref was right 
there less than a foot away. Giannis nearly stepped on the man's foot. How he didn't see that Giannis stepped out of bounds, I have no clue. And do you guys remember a couple of days ago when LeBron James was talking about the thing that upsets him most about the refs is when you go to them after something happens and they say, oh, that wasn't a foul. I feel like that's what the ref said yesterday. That ref need to be fired. Just another tangent on the refs. I still can't wrap my head around who on earth grows up and decides they want to be an NBA referee. Who would sign up for a job that gets you hated by everyone where you can't have any fun. You don't get to enjoy the NBA at all. What kind of person are you? It's probably that one kid who was like the hall monitor's pet that would also snitch on everybody. That's probably the exact person who grows up and becomes a referee. Anyways, it ain't nothing you can do about this now. Bucks hold on to win 97 to 95 after nearly blowing a 20 point lead that they had in the first quarter. Paul George was not active for OKC last night and Russell Westbrook tried to make up for it. He was really trying hard out there. 40 points 14 rebounds and 9 assists, the only thing is he fell in love with the 3 ball again. I figured he was going to have a game where he would relapse like this, uh, 2 of 9 from deep. Look, Westbrook, let me just remind you, once again, you are a great player. You can do anything on the court except shoot the 3. I mean, be like Giannis, he understands that he can do everything except shoot the 3, so he doesn't try and shoot the 3, as he led the Bucks with 23 points. 12 rebounds and 6 assists. Chris Paul came back for the Rockets, but they still lost. See, the thing about these losing streak is the longer they go on, the harder they are to snap because guys are going to start getting frustrated and that's going to make them start getting away from the things they were doing that made them a great team in the first place. It becomes psychological at that point. And that is what the Rockets are going through right now. There is no need to panic. It's a long season. They are still a really good team and most teams go through these sort of rough patches. They fell again, 121 to 103 to Washington Wizards. And it wasn't John Wall or Bradley B that the Rockets couldn't contain yesterday, but instead it was Otto Porter Jr. who had 26 points, hit seven of his 11 triples, seven assists, as well as six rebounds, and Kelly Oubre Jr. was good off the bench with 21 points. Bulls might mess around and actually make the playoffs if they keep this up. Look, if the Bulls really do make the playoffs this year, then I won't know what to believe in anymore. They beat the Pacers last night, and any fans, I gotta tell you guys the same thing that I told Bucks fans. Don't feel bad about this L because the Bulls have been playing really great basketball i mean they have won 10 out of their last 12 games that is insane they didn't even have chris dunn last night either but instead the duo of laurie marketing and nikola miritich was just too much for indy to handle marketing with a new career high of 32 points and miritich added 28 off the bench and i guess i should also mention the pacers without victor oladipo but darren collison Tried his best with 30 points. 119 to 107 was the final score. This don't change a thing, all right? The Hornets still need to trade Kemba Walker, but I will cut down some slag because they got a really good win yesterday over the Golden State Warriors. But I also have some pretty great news for any Golden State Warriors fans out there as Stephen Curry is back. He didn't play last night, but he will be playing tonight. So I am sure they are thrilled to have him back on the court. Dwight Howard though was dominant yesterday with 29 points, 13 rebounds and seven assists, but Draymond Green was a monster himself. The man had eight points, but also 11 rebounds, three blocks and 16 assists. I don't think I have ever seen coaches go at each other like this. Dwayne Casey and Mike Budenholzer looked like they were ready to scrap last night. The Raptors won this one pretty easily, 111 to 98 over the Hawks to snap their two game losing streak. But the real action came after the game when Dwayne Casey kinda had to be held back and had some words for the Hawks coaching staff. And after the game, Casey said that he was just sticking up for his players. He was upset that the kid stole the ball to go for a layup. And Again, I understand the situation. The kid, we weren't trying to run the score up, but again, they were trying to score and we were trying to play defense. And again, his instincts stole the ball and, you know, was, you know, there was no intent. And I don't think Bud, you know, he was probably in the heat of the moment. I was in the heat of the moment. Uh, Bud's a good man, good coach. 
But, um, you know, I'm going to stick up for my players at any time. That's just good coaching right there. The Lakers held a team meeting before this game to clear the air about some of their frustrations. Luke Wallen said that without Lonzo in the games, LA started to ISO more, which is not what he wants them to be doing. And as a result, they have been losing a lot. With a loss yesterday to the Clippers, they are now 2-8 and eight in their last 10 games. 121 to 106, the final score. Blake Griffin returned to the Clippers like a month ahead of schedule, so that is cool. He had 24 points. Six rebounds and six assists, but true to their curse, if one of their players comes back, then another one has to go. Austin Rivers was a sacrificial lamb in this one, who had probably been the Clippers' best player over the past couple of weeks, either him or Lou Williams. But he left the game last night with what the Clippers say is a sprained Achilles. You guys can't tell me that this organization is incurred. DeAndre Jordan has been the only Clipper player to avoid the injury bug somehow his entire career. How on earth does DeMarcus Cousins drop 32 points, 20 rebounds, and eight assists, and the Pelicans still lose to the Mavericks? That just doesn't make any sense, but then again, looking at it, it's probably because the Pelicans bench is still the definition of trash. The starters from New Orleans played pretty well, but they only got 10 points off the bench, while the Mavericks, on the other hand, got 60 points off the bench, a 60 to 10 advantage in bench scoring. As Dallas wins again, 128 to 120, they have now won three straight games. They might be looking to be the Bulls of the West. That is Smith Jr. though. His first career triple double with 21 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. The Nets blew up the heat. Not really much to talk about here. You never know what you're gonna get with Miami this year. Sometimes they look really good, and other times they look how they looked last night. 111 to 87, the final score. Rondé Hollis Jefferson played well for the Nets though with 18 points on 8 of 9 shooting as well as 8 rebounds. The new Devin Booker run Suns got another win and this time it didn't take a Tyson Chandler buzzer beater. They beat the Kings 111 to 101. Booker with uh, 26. That wraps up all the action from last night though. You guys know both of the player of the day by clicking this little card right here. Just remember though, the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And yesterday, you guys liked to see CJ McCollum in his 34 points, seven rebounds, and four assists as your player of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to smack that like button as well as subscribe to the channel to join the quest of 200K and hashtag a milli in a year. And to stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA on a daily basis. But until tomorrow, keep getting the buckets team SDC and I'm out of here. Peace.